Hello anatomy students. Uh, we are going to talk about the different layers of skin and I have these video lectures broken up into two parts. Um, the part that we're going to talk about today is about the three main layers of the skin. Um, and after that, we're going to go into more detail about the epidermis. Now, as we're talking about the layers of the skin, we're going to start from the deepest layer, which is the subcutaneous layer. And then we'll move on to the middle layer called the dermis, and then the topmost layer or the most superficial layer called the epidermis. And then, like I said, the epidermis is further divided into um, smaller layers, and we'll talk about those in the next video. Um, but the first layer of skin, the deepest layer, is the subcutaneous layer. Um, this is also considered the hypodermis. And as you can see in the picture, you have these little yellow globs. Um, the hypodermis is going to consist mostly of adipose tissue or fat. Um, and also blood vessels and nerves are going to pass through the subcutaneous layer in order to serve the rest of the layers of the skin. Um, but uh, the other um, item that is also located in the subcutaneous layer of the skin are lymphatic vessels. And the limb system is going to help to collect extra water from the, oh, hold on a minute. Sorry, um, is that it's going to collect extra water from the extracellular space and it is going to recycle that back into the blood. So um, the subcutaneous layer is going to contain blood vessels and nerves and lymphatic vessels. But um, the biggest portion of the subcutaneous layer is the adipose tissue, or fat. And what the adipose tissue is going to do is it's going to um, provide for padding or protection. There are also some different kinds of cells that are found throughout the subcutaneous layer. The first type of cell is called a fibroblast. And these cells are going to manufacture proteins called um, elastin and collagen. And these two proteins are responsible for the strength and for the flexibility of the skin. Um, there's also fat cells. And there are also cells that are called macrophages. The macrophages play a role in the immune system of the body and um, when antigens or bacteria or other type of invaders enter the body through the skin, there's a good chance that they're going to encounter a macrophage and um, hopefully that macrophage will be able to um, eat up that invader so that it doesn't cause any type of infection. The second layer of skin that we're going to talk about is the middle layer of skin, which is called the dermis. The dermis, as you could see, is superficial to the subcutaneous layer, but it's deep to the epidermis. Uh, the dermis consists of dense, irregular connective tissue, and the main tissue that is going to be found inside of the dermis is collagen. Collagen is going to um, help keep the skin strong, but then there's another type of protein that's also located in the dermis, which is called elastin. Um, and the elastin is going to 
help keep the skin flexible, kind of like elastic in the waistband or um, of different pants and shorts or um, in the sleeves of your clothes. So the dermis is um, made up of dense, irregular, connective tissue. It contains collagen and elastin. But other things that are present in the dermis include nerve endings, hair follicles, smooth muscle, glands, mostly oil glands and sweat glands, and also lymph vessels. Even though the skin uh, does have flexibility and is able to be stretched, oftentimes um, during pregnancy or during a growth spurt or uh, during a very fast weight gain, sometimes the skin can be overstretched and it will cause the dermis to rupture. And what results um, are lines that look like scars, which are called stretch marks. Now, if we take a look at the picture over on the right, you can see that the very top layer of the dermis has ridges. You can see I'm just kind of tracing them here with orange ink. And these ridges are called papilla. And part of the uh, responsibility of the papilla is to anchor the dermis to the epidermis to kind of form a lock and key configuration so that, um, you know, for instance, if uh, you get a rug burn, your, the two layers of skin won't separate because they're locked together by these dermal papilla. And the most superficial layer of skin that I wanted to talk about today is called the epidermis. So the epidermis is the most superficial layer of skin. Um, and as you can see, it is attached to the dermis. And you can kind of see a row of like a purple line going on along here. Um, the epidermis is attached to the dermis by something called a basement membrane. And the epidermis is also going to consist of layers and layers of cells. Now, the most prominent cell or the most common type of cell that you're going to find in the epidermis is called a keratocyte. Um, ker, uh, karat, ker, <coughs> sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, that would be keratinocyte. Um, these keratinocytes are going to produce a protein, which is called keratin. And this keratin is responsible for the strength of the skin. Um, but it's also responsibility for the permeability characteristics. Um, what that means is that the keratin is going to allow some things in. Uh, to diffuse through the skin, but many things are going to be kept out of the skin. So the keratin is responsible for um, the skin being such a good barrier. Um, another type of cell that you'll find in the epidermis is called a melanocyte. And um, melanocytes are responsible for skin color. 
they are going to produce a protein called melanin, which um, is a dark brown or black pigment that is going to give our skin its color. Um, another type of cell is called a Langerhans cell. And these cells are responsible for the immune response. Um, and it looks like that's about it for the cells that I want you to know that are found in the epidermis. Um, basically, though, the um, epidermis is layered. Um, and basically, the way that um, it's organized is that in the deepest layer is where the cells undergo mitosis and divide. And then what happens is that the cells are going to rise to the surface of the skin and as they do, the cells die. So, you know, if you're looking at your arm thinking, wow, I'm looking at dead cells, the answer is yes, you actually are. Um, but the dead cells don't accumulate on the skin. They undergo a process which is called desquamation. Or that's just a fancy way of, se of saying that our skin sheds the dead cells once they arrive in the uppermost layer. Um, the process that occurs within the cells as they rise to the top is called keratinization. Basically, as the cells move from the bottommost layer of the epidermis up to the top, they are going to change their shape, they're going to change their structure, and they're going to change their chemical composition. And what this is going to do for our skin is it allows our skin to resist abrasion and also to form a permeability barrier. So these are the characteristics of the three main layers of skin that I want you to know and uh, you can view the next video to learn about the five layers of the epidermis. Thanks a lot!